All right. Uh, yeah, it's been a great year. It's been a long year, and I'm glad for it to be a year that is over. And I'm here to share with you a whole bunch of comic stuff. Now, if you've ever seen my room tours I did early on, whatever, you know, to had a whole bunch of boxes. This is the sum total of my comic book collection that's in my house right now. Uh, everything else is in storage and uh, staying there till we move, hopefully, in the next two weeks. We'll still be Tacoma Comics. I'll still be in Tacoma. Just need a slightly bigger house. Um, right now, our house has three extra people in it. My brother and sister-in-law are uh, living here with my baby niece, which is really awesome. Um, they just moved to Tacoma. They're getting, they've got a place. They're just waiting for their stuff to get delivered. But uh, it's pretty cool. They're here hanging out, but we get to see how small my uh, house is. So, uh, yeah, we need to move, get, get a little bit extra room. Kids can't share room anymore. My, my older one's going to uh, middle school, so that's about time. So we got comics today. I, in this box is everything I've collected just in two weeks' time. Um, a lot of new stuff, uh, you know, new comic book hauls, plus a lot of auction winnings, a lot of stuff I've been buying. Um, and, gosh, I realize I'm behind on contests. So right after this, I'm going to do Bueller's contest, and I'm going to do um, Joker 68's contest. There's a uh, little Tacoma Comics or big Tacoma Comics. I know he's he's tall for his age. It's my boy. Um, I'm going to show you some of his artwork later. Uh, I got a cool Father's Day gift from him. So uh, let's see what else. Um, halls, auctions, contest winnings. I, I won a like impromptu contest last night on um, cold ones and, and comics or comics and cold ones. So shout out to All About Comics and Pope Grimy. That was pretty awesome. And artist Monte Moore. I can't wait to get that. Um, Drinking the coffee out of my Chelsea mug this morning in honor of Nigeria, who have John Obi Mikel and Moses on, and they uh, beat Iceland 2 0 in the World Cup. Pretty awesome. Another awesome thing that I did uh, before I get to the comics, I promise I will get to the comics. I uh, purchased uh, Greg Luck, Rucka and um, Michael Lark, who are the uh, creators of um, Lazarus. Did a little fundraiser. They created a new shirt with Lazarus says keep families together. And I, I purchased one of those this morning. Um, you know, this this channel is not political to any extent, but uh, you know, I'm a screaming liberal if anybody wasn't sure. Um, but if anybody thinks that what we're doing right now with uh refugee children whose families are seeking asylum is is right, then stop watching my channel, please. I don't want you here. Um it's a travesty, it's a human rights violation, it's a black mark in the United States from which we will not recover um for a long, long time. It's disgusting and it's horrible. And uh, you know, I don't care about your politics. I hope you don't care too much about mine. I've I've kept them off my channel, but that's just straight up it's disgusting. All right. Now that I've lost half my viewers, let's get to comics. Hey if you're in the chat, say hello. Uh actually let me start with some shipping. I just kept these about because hey Sean, um Oh, cool. Yeah, the Nigeria game was great. I actually, because it's the first day after um, off school, I didn't get up at five to watch the uh, the Brazil game, but I caught that on the rewind, and then I watched Nigeria. And it's going to set up a crazy final in that group. That is really the group of death. Um, so I just wanted to start off by showing this. This is uh, something I got off. Um, I actually won on Alex the Comic Quarters auction and this is actually i wanted this package from him and i just want to talk about good shipping right i've gotten some packages recently that aren't good shipping but i won't show those i don't want to embarrass anybody so alex did a priority mail envelope inside that he had another envelope i want to make sure i don't show off his address or anything and then inside that envelope he had some cardboard that he had taped together so it makes like a gemini box and he's very famous for promoting the use of blue tape i know he's not the only one maybe not the first one but um blue painters tape does not stick which is really nice it will not rip your comics up so let's see what i won from alex here shout out if you guys aren't sub to him you know he's a longtime player in the youtube comic business has a great collection and he's got great auctions that he runs I know he's trying to sell a lot of stuff because he's, he's going for the big boy books. So if you're picking up minor keys like I am, you know, definitely uh, check out Alex the Common Quarters auction because he and the people he has on um, his auction are often trying to get get uh, get rid of stuff. So first up, Ghost Rider number one. I don't think this is a variant. Um, I didn't really want this one. Wow, some glare there, huh? I didn't really want this one too badly, but it was like a, a – combo auction so i grabbed it um 
as part of the auction. It's the first appearance of Cosmic Ghost Rider, I believe, or first time they say who the Cosmic Ghost Rider is. I don't know too much about it. Um, this beautiful variant edition of Captain Marvel number one. This is um, the mighty Captain Marvel right after uh, Kelly Sue, Sue's uh, run or double run on it, I, I believe. I don't know too much about um, the stuff after Kelly Sue, but I love that cover. I thought that was pretty cool. Pick that up before the movie comes out. And this is what I've been after, and this is why I bid on this particular auction. Moon Girl 28, the first appearance of Omnipotentis. It says it right there. Uh, it could be a total waste of money or it could be a totally cool book. But I've got some Moon Girl keys, and, and I actually like the character. Um, what I really liked was uh, the Secret Warriors run that, that – um, Matt Rosenberg did with her. That was freaking phenomenal. If you guys have seen that, um, pick up that run. If they do a trade, get that trade. He, he can write the hell out of the established characters that you already know and um, just, just do really good justice. So definitely get on that. Um, Biggie's Comics, Home of the New York Warriors. Uh, Enrique is his name. And again, priority mail envelope, a little larger than, than Alex is, but basically the same idea inside the priority mail envelope. Uh, comic Gemini mailer. Um, same thing Alex did, but Alex created his out of cardboard. This is an actual mailer. Look at that. That's beautiful. That is what people should do when they deliver you comics, right? Uh, so just because he's trying to keep track, Tacoma, $25. So he knew, uh, <laughs> he knew who this was going to. Imagine after an auction, you start getting PayPal stuff and you forget where comics goes. That could really drive you crazy. So he's got this kind of larger bag. And then most of this stuff is in Mylar. Some of it's in regular stuff. And I've forgotten what's here. So that great Marvel Legacy cover. After I after I did this, I think I already have this. But, you know, again, when all your comics are in the storage unit, it's hard to remember. I don't mind having two copies of that cover. That was that was pretty darn cool. Um, a little ridiculous with, with the musculature on, on Wolverine's arms there. I'm an old school Wolverine fan from like the 80s, um, Kenny X-Men, and he never quite looked like that, but that's cool. And Laura Kinney looking really cool. Um, Erica Henderson, who writes Squirrel Girl, posted a pic of Laura Kinney looking kind of more short and squat uh, like Wolverine. And she's like, this is how Wolverine should look if he's uh, – if X-23 should look if she's really a clone. I thought that was kind of interesting, a different take. Uh, I'm not a Scotty Young fan, but, you know, he signed this one. Um, I'll probably try to, I don't want to say flip this because I'm not going to make a lot of money, but this will go into uh, contest winnings or an auction if I ever do an auction. Um, you know, I actually, uh, he was like, if it goes above X amount, I'll throw this one in. And that's what made me jump on this because I love Eric B and Rakim. You know, it's just uh, old school hip hop. I really lost track of hip hop after like the 90s. Uh, dating myself here, but I love that cover. So he was like, if it goes above 20, I'll throw this in. And I'm like, would you throw that in and get rid of the other Deadpool one? Uh, and he's like, I'll throw them all in. So I thought that was pretty cool of him. Um, all three of those books are 25, which was really cool. And I really wanted that one. So uh, yeah, I, I like the hip hop variant, Sean, when they're ones that I know. Um, I've got the A-Force uh, NWA straight out of Compton one, which I love. I've got the uh, What's the other one that I really like? I've got the uh, Miseducation of Lauren Hill, the um, Miss Miss Marvel number one of, of the second volume she Willow Wilson did. Hey, from across the pond, Escargo, how you doing? France is still hanging on that World Cup there, but uh, we'll see how long. It's, it's, this is a great World Cup. If you're a football fan, there's been upsets and underdogs and just great matches. VAR, the video assistant ref, has been awesome. Just just done it really well. Like that's that's a freaking example of how to do um, video assistant referee. It's really, really cool. Um, they've, they've done it right. The idea of not calling offsides unless it's blatant. And then if there's a goal, reviewing it, see if it was offsides. You stop the play a lot less like that. Really, really good. Yeah, um, I think I was I wasn't watching Sweden today. I figured two games a day, unless they're like stuff I'm really into. It's big. I've got hey sleepy. I've got a England match. That's that's my team. Um, my parents are both English. So I was raised watching England. They're playing on Sunday at seven, and I'm going to be in Chicago, uh, kind of at a work thing. I'm a Lego master educator, um, which is a group that Lego Education has, and uh, 
I've got Gene Paul Ace Peter kisses in the house. Um, I've got to uh, kind of be on 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 call there and working, so I'm a little nervous about missing that England game. Uh, so we'll see how the the people that are running it from Lego Education feel about me watching through breakfast or something. All right, let's get back to comics. But you know, if you want to chat more World Cup, please shine in there. Argentina is old; they're not bad. They just they need to get new young people in there. All new Wolverine 18 variant cover, uh, a venomized cover, I guess they call it. Um, I got this on another auction, and I honestly, things are happening so fast, I can't remember where or when. This one I picked up from Half Price Books. Wolverine, sorry, there's a card came in there. It's killing it, but there's Wolverine number one. Before I moved um, to Tacoma, so about 11 years ago, um, I... I sold this for $10 on eBay and I just bought it for $30 at half price books. It's actually in really nice condition. It's like a nine O pressable to a, a nine two or nine four. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, X-Men four first appearance of mega red. I believe I got that um, with the auction that the all new Wolverine came in. I honestly can't remember what auction that was. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, that is an awesome Matina cover. Thank you. Escargo. Uh, X-Force number eight, I got this off of eBay and I found a, a deal with it for two. If anybody wants one, I'd be happy to trade for something, nothing big. Um, so X-Force eight and 11 and New Mutants 98 are all super confusing. Uh, apparently, X-Force 11 is the first appearance of Domino in continuity as Domino. New Mutants 98 you thought was the first appearance of Domino. It's also the first appearance of uh, some other big guy. I can't remember who, but it's the first appearance of Domino. And, um, but in New Mutants 98, apparently it's a clone or a, a copycat, a criminal called copycat who's pretending to be Domino. In X-Force 8, which obviously came out before X-Force 11, it's not Domino, it's a flashback of Domino. So why X-Force 8 or 11 is considered the first appearance when there was a copycat appearance and a flashback appearance uh, I think we give CGC a little too much um, credit for being able to establish a character's first appearance. Um, so I don't know for what that's worth. It's a little, little crazy. Gideon, thank you. Gideon and Domino and then some other character who I don't think went anywhere. Um, but yeah, Gideon and, and Domino were, were the big ones there. So then I grabbed um, X-Force 2, uh, which is second appearance of... Uh, that guy, what's his name? I can't remember his name. He's somewhat famous character. Um, and I got X Force Eleven, so that's that's considered the first official appearance of Domino. But I'm gonna I'm gonna call foul on that. You know, the retconning copycat and the flashback not counting. Something's got to count there. So yeah, there you go. Um, first appearance of Jubilee. I got this from Longbox Love Affair. Uh, in X-Men 317. Is it? No, first appearance of Blink. Excuse me. First appearance of Blink, X-Men 317. Uh, now, this is interesting. Talking about first appearances. X-Men Annual 14. I also got this from Longbox Love Affair. This is a really nice condition. Both of these are in really nice condition. Um, this supposedly... I'll say supposedly. <laughs> this supposedly... Uh, predates um, because it's newsstand. It, it might have come out or been out before 266. This is like an alternative first appearance of Gambit. Um, again, it, it gets a little crazy trying to figure that out. Um, and I'm not too worried about first appearances. I don't love Gambit as a character, uh, but I love Chris Claremont Uncanny X Men. So I finally pulled the trigger on this. This was listed in one of my local comic book shops as uh, a 9-2, and I think it's pretty accurate. I think it's pressable to a 4 or 6. It's pretty darn clean. Super white pages. I have been holding off on this forever. I'm trying to get the entire Claremont um, Uncanny X-Men, and I've got actually past his run. I've got about 145 through 320, missing a few of the post Claremont 300s. This was the only one I was missing in that. Um, between 94 and um, and 150, I've got about half those issues. But but post 150, I now have every single Claremont issue. So he had this listed at 125. I offered him 100 for it. Um, 
I haven't pressed any book, Sleepy. Um, so I'm just kind of going off repeating stuff that I hear other people say in, in auctions. Um, oh, this is pressable to 9 4. So I could be full of it, to be honest with you. I don't want to um, go. I think if you're trying to increase the value or you're about to get something slabbed, then definitely press it. This is part of my Claremont run, what got me into comics, what changed my life as a teenager. I could care less if it's a 9 0, a 9 2, or a 9 4. When I go to sell my collection 30 years from now, which I probably won't do, I'll probably pass it down to my kids. Um, you know, unless I like lose my job or something, I don't think I'll ever sell. I'll probably pass it down to my kids. Maybe I'd press it if I was going to sell it, but I'm super happy with the way it looks, the way it presents. It'll go nicely on the wall. Um, pressing, I think, is really important. If oh, I lost the chat, interesting. Pressing is really important if you're 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 in it for the money. Um, I'm not necessarily in it for the money, so at least not now. So I, I don't need to do that. So anyway, um, I got it for a hundred. So I, somebody in the chat, which there the chat's back. Somebody said uh, that they've been looking for a decent copy as cargo. You know, it took me about a year. There is a slab nine four for seventy five. I should have gotten a year ago at a local comic show. I offered the guy fifty. He said he couldn't go that low, um, and then this shot up. But to get an unslabbed in this nice a condition for 100 I was pretty happy. He also threw in um, an annual 14. Uh, he had these as like a, a package deal, but this is like a really crappy copy of, of 14. So, Sean, I think I'm about uh, 25 short boxes, and I've got about 200 comics to a, a short box. So um, every five boxes is 1,000. So a rough estimate is 5,000. Um, it could be anywhere between four and six. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't have them. I, I keep notes in Evernote so I can check my phone when I'm doing, but I don't have like a spreadsheet that lists them all. Um, yeah, I mean, Sleepy Reader is, is definitely worth it. And I know that that Erod, who's in the New York Warriors and a bunch of other people do them um, to make them themselves money. They do it pretty, pretty cheaply, $10 plus shipping, I, I think. Don't quote me on that. It could really be worth it, you know. Um, I don't know. And so that five thousand mark, I'd love to get down to about about three thousand or four thousand. I think there's a bunch I, I could get rid of without being like, oh, I miss those. Um, I've over uh, I've over collected a little bit, um, and I definitely want to switch to digital. That might be something I do this summer. And stop getting new comics like, you know, I get new comics at the rate of about 20 to $30 a week. So about five to six new comics a week. I'd love to be down to two or three new comics a week and do the rest digitally. Um, it becomes almost a chore to read them. And I enjoy reading so much. But if it's a, a chore to read, I'm not sure that it's worth it. But I'm definitely somebody who not just collecting like old stuff. I like new comics. I like reading comics. Um, I like indie comics. I like all that. So we'll see what happens. Um, let me take some time this summer to really think about it now that school's out. Uh, CLZ, Sean, what is that? Is that, that an app or uh, tell us what that stands for, please. Let's go on. First appearance of X-Force, last issue of New Mutants 100. Pretty uh, clean copy like that. Hey, somebody new is here. Comic database app. Okay, I'll have to check that out. I do want to get something like that. Somebody told me there was one where you could scan, um, where you could scan like the barcodes on comics to, to include them. I don't know if that works with ones that don't have barcodes, but that would be a cool app to get. So like you don't have to input it all yourself. So Boombox makes Lumberjanes and, and I love uh, CLZ lets you scan or search. Cool. And I love Lumberjanes, um, really fun comic, especially for somebody like me who loved summer camp as a kid and a staff member. Um, and they did a wraparound variant, and they did a left connecting and right connecting variant. And on their website, they only had the right connecting variant. So like Boom Studios does the Boombox um, boom uh, stuff on their website. And so I was getting really frustrated because my comic book shop didn't get me the variants like he said he was going to. So I ordered the variants, but I only ordered the right variant and the wraparound because they didn't have the left variant. 
Um, then my comic book shop is like, hey, we felt bad. We ordered for you. They must have ordered from the same site. They got me the right variant again. I'm like, I don't need that anymore. Uh, so I emailed customer service and they looked into it and they're like, yeah, Boom Studios was unaware that Boombox did a left and a right variant. So then they put the left variant on the um, on the website and I just ordered that. That should be here soon. By left and right variant, I mean they took the wraparound cover and they also made – you know, there's the left side and, and then there's the right side. So kind of two half cover variants. All right. I'm almost done this run. I've got two more to go. There is the Annie Wu 1 in 50 variant to number three. Um, so all I need now for this whole run is the Jorge Molina variant for number two. That will take me forever. That's like a nine, seven, eight, nine hundred dollar comic right now. And you can't find like a raw for anywhere I think below five or six. Um, and most people are slabbing them right away. So the number two Jorge Molina variant is the big one. And then I'm missing the second period of second printing of number five, which is tough to find, but is not rare or worth a lot. Um, that is either the wraparound or the, the I guess that's the wraparound because that would be the left variant that I'm missing. And, and so I don't have that one. So that's definitely the wraparound cover. Um, for the Lumberjanes 50th uh, anniversary. And then, oh, I love this. I've been looking for this for a long time. This is the John Tyler Christopher, who he does all the um, the uh, figure, like the, the um, Star Wars figure variants, um, action figure variants. He also did this, apparently. This is called the Negative Space variant for Champions number one. I'm a huge Miss Marvel fan. I'm a huge... Uh, champions fan and i actually really love this cover i just like that yeah it, it really does it crosses the continent and how cool it looks so i was excited to get that one that showed up in the mail yesterday um i got most stuff shipped to my school and yesterday was the last stuff at my school i'm still waiting on one comic um that uh that is supposed to go to school and now school is is out so i got a friend who's uh, administrative intern. Hopefully he'll be there. I'm getting the Art Adams color variant to number one for Miss Marvel. That was the other one I was missing. I had the black and white variant. I did not have the color variant, so I've got to get that. All right, let's move a little bit quicker because I don't love this next stuff as much. This was thrown in by um, Big Bear. I won an auction from Alex Comic Quarter from him a while ago. He also uh, really wrapped his stuff up nice. It's a Moon Knight with Spider-Man and Wolverine and uh, Punisher in it. Pretty cool. Hellboy Krampus Knocked. I got to give this one a read. I haven't read that yet. Just, that was a, a cool cover. Um, I love Mike Mignola. Love most of his stuff. Really love his um, Baltimore stuff. I wish that stuff got more play and more love. First appearance of Mike Renauts. If Hasbro ever um, comes out in the movie, this will be something that I'm flipping because I don't really care. I used to have those, but um, I shot. They had arms that shot out of the figure. And I hit my sister in the car in a car ride in vacation as a kid. And my parents took those figures away. So I don't have a big connection to my Micronaut figures. Um, first appearance of Rye, I believe, in Rye number one. Or is this the first appearance of Bloodshot? And then in Bloodshot 6 is the first appearance of Ninjak. Something like that. I don't honestly remember. But it's a cool cover. It's a classic cover. Not a character that I'm greatly like into. I do have a bunch of like the mid nineties, um, valiant stuff. So I might put a package together and, and, and auction off. That's right. Um, that, that is, uh, Adam Hughes. Thank you. Poor man's comments. That's the other reason why I was going to, um, to grab that because, uh, Adam Hughes is at Rose city comic-con. And so I went, I missed him at Emerald city comic-con line was too long. Rose city's got, it's smaller lines, are usually shorter, and there's not a lot of creators listed yet. So I've got a bunch of Adam Hughes books, not a lot considering how popular he is. I don't have a lot of his stuff, but I've got some stuff I want to get. Um, this was a nice variant. Um, uh, Carrie Dodson Midtown comics, exclusive variant I got for uh, rebirth. Number one, considering it's got cat women on, on the cover, um, mean chased by bat and weddings coming up. I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, and then a second printing of this, I've got all four of the generations covers. I thought it's cool that there was a second printing of one of them. I'm big Miss Marvel fan. So I grabbed that. Uh, if any of you are getting any of the wedding variants for Batman number 50, let me know which ones I'm getting the Josh Middleton three um, pack. It's like a, color of black and white and a sketch or something like that, or a virgin of black and white and a, and a, a 
a black and white sketch and a regular one. So I just, I mean, there's like so many, those are the ones that caught my eye. Um, so I figured I'd get those and, and see what happens. Uh, I could keep one and sell two, but uh, you got the Middleton one. Yep, me too. So maybe I got the one that everybody else is getting. But they said they were limited, didn't they, poor man? Um, I think they're limited to like 3,000 each. Uh, yeah, I love I love the work that Dobsons do. Um, really, really nice stuff. Hey, I don't know Comic Book 305. Hello to you. Thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Hey, here's my wife. She hates being on camera, so she's going to walk by. You'll see the back of her head. She's an awesome person. She puts up with me, and that's pretty awesome in and of itself. Um, oddly normal. I love this. It's a kid's comic. I love this when it came out. I love the story that Otis Frampton was telling. And after like issue 11, I think it went to all trade format, which is what Kurt Gusiek is doing with, um, he's doing that with, uh, Autumn Lands, I think. Oh no, with Astro City. And it's what Greg Ruck is doing with Lazarus. So it seems like People are getting tired of paying $4.99 every month for issues. Um, so I got these on super back sale at, at Midtown. That same with that um, Terry Dodson Batman cover. This was number two by um, Rob Guillory, who does uh, the artwork on um, Chew. So I thought that was really cool. And then this is number 10. I never picked up number 10. It kind of, I guess my comic book sh shop stopped getting it and it wasn't on my pull list. Uh, let's move that pile out of the way. Hey, um, if you guys watch Comics with Bueller, he's got his contest it's supposed to end today. I forgot to do it. Um, I entered through the chat, but not through the video. Uh, he's extending it till Saturday. So you might want to jump on that. Let's see what else I got. These are just cheap pickups at half price books. And after reading them, I realized why nobody was uh, super into them. Is that uh, Saisi Tin or Diaki Mundi? I can't remember my Phantom Menace trivia because Phantom Menace sucked. I hate all the revisionists that think it's a good movie. It's not. Take it from a 47 year old, almost, I'm 46. Irrelevant man. Phantom Menace sucked. Uh, I think it is Ki Adi. I was going in Diaki. Ki Adi Mundi. Thank you. Um, I loved all the Jedi in Phantom Menace and, and the, the new Jedi, but I didn't love the movie itself. Um, the Middleton Batman is 3,500. Yeah, so I think it's pretty good if, you know, obviously there's so many others, but, you know, it's, it's a decent deal for that. So if you haven't seen me do this before, I will always pick up a copy of this when I can find it for like a buck or two. Because Christian Ward deserves more credit for his artwork. This is Odyssey, which may not be everybody's cup of tea. It's a science fiction retelling of the Odyssey written in pentameter by Matt Fraction of Hawkman and Sex Criminals fame. Um, and it is uh, a retelling of the Odyssey with an all-women cast in space in the future. So you've got to be into that sort of thing. But the first issue has an eight-page spread by Christian Ward, who I think deserves more love as an artist. Um, and is just amazing. You know, you don't get that. You definitely will never get that in Marvel, but you don't get that anywhere. You can get that in a book for cover price and now for less than cover price. If you can pick that up, absolutely, absolutely pick that up. You know, you can find it pretty cheap in back issue bins. Yeah, it is nuts. And in Longshanks, it's not well known. Um, so I want you to look at this because I've got the variant cover he did to Thor number one coming up in a little bit. And uh, you can see the similarity in his colors and artworks, but uh, it is. And I've got like four copies. So I want to like take the, take one out. I've got his, his signature on one copy, but I want to take one of them out and just pin that up. Cause that's awesome. All right. I have no idea what this is. I know wizard does all these weird variants. Um, these like half issues and stuff. This is from like 2000 X paradise. And it's, it's Alex Ross art. I don't know much else about it. They're thin comics. Um, they were like 50 cents, 25 cents at half price book. So I jumped on this. If anything knows, buddy knows anything more about these, let me know. I just thought they were kind of cool. I love Brian K. Vaughn. I've been trying to collect these. I've got issue one. It's missing issue two. I got this for like 25 cents or something at half price books. Ex Machina. I never saw the movie, which which I want to. Um, I want Ex Machina. I want to see that movie. Um, 
Hey, later, poor man. Yeah, get get to work, you. <laughs> I'm uh I'm off work, so I think I might have mentioned that. Again, half price books yesterday, no, a couple days ago, had uh paper girls like one through twenty. Um, I still think this is a great series, so I picked up one and two again. I think it was like my second or third copy of those. Really cool. Another thing that I absolutely love and I picked up is this vision. This is the director's cut, so it's just two issues and then a lot of back matter. I will will get the um I eventually will definitely get the uh the hardcover. Um this I, I like this better than Mr. Miracle, which I also like. Um I, I'd probably like this better than Sheriff of Babylon, but that was phenomenal. Tom King is, for my money, the best new, newish author in comics. And the stuff he does is just miles above everybody else. All right. Some of my absolute favorite comics. My older son made me this cover for Father's Day. Um, included his take on characters. is Captain Marvel, some version of Iron Man. Um, I think that's... The Millennium Falcon. No, that's Thor's hammer. <laughs> it looked like the Millennium Falcon. Thor's hammer. So he just did that for me. And my other son, um, Into the Blackout, because I think the last page of this comic is like everything goes dark. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool getting those sketch variants from uh, Little Tacoma Comics 1 and 2. I think I've shown this one before. I just had it hanging around. Signed um, 137. And then there's 127, which I picked up a really clean copy of, like that one there. Kind of really cool. First appearance of Binary, maybe? I don't know if you guys um, read this as a comic. This is Fight Club 2, but I saw these pretty cheap. Um, there's an issue 2 variant, I believe. Second copy of issue 1. I've got issue 1, 3, and 4, so I was really looking for 2. Um, that's the variant for two, I believe, the old uh, American Gothic takeoff. And then I'm just actually collecting this. Uh, I thought that was a really, really cool cover. This Charles Soule's um, Darth Vader is as good as Karen Gillan's Darth Vader. Absolutely amazing, amazing run in that comic. Let me make some more room here. Bam and bam. Chat's gone quiet, guys. Say something. <laughs> I thought that was an incredibly cool cover of Dark Knight 3, number one, uh, discount comic book store cover. Luckily, it's one of the only Joker books I have right now, um, so I can use that for Joker 68's contest. Moving a little faster here, picked up third printing of Spider-Gwen number one. She's appearing in the Miles Morales Spider-Man movie. Got this for like a buck fifty, which... You know, it's not, it's the second series from, from Kelly Sue. It's definitely not her first appearance, but it's still a Captain Marvel number one. And the way that movie's going, pick up those all the time. Lumberjanes 50, that's the regular cover. I was talking about the variants for that earlier. Comic Cold Mirror, Emma Rios is the artist for Pretty Deadly by Kelly Sue DeConnick, who's also on Captain Marvel and Bitch Planet. Um... I picked up the first three of this because Emma Rios wrote them. I won't pick up any more. I'm just not that interested. Amazing Spider-Man and Silk. Uh, decent fun read. No big deal. Just stuff I was picking up to try out and half price books. Amazing Fantasy. This is from like 2004. I always thought it was a super cool cover. Um, it's not that interesting of a book. <laughs> I read it. It's okay. Uh, this is one of the metal tie-ins I did not have, so I just grabbed this really cheap. I read Am Animosity, Evolu I read Animosity to Rise, Animosity, and Animosity Evolution. I have to say, I think the storyline in Evolution is overtaking the storyline in the regular comic, so pretty cool there. This is the one I wanted to show you. So this color palette, like this is Christian Ward on Thor number one, which is a great story. Um Really great, like, new chapter in Thor. I like the legacy numbering up here, 707. I think that's a better way to do it there. Um, Thor number one. Uh, but this is Christian Ward variant. And these colors are just like he was doing in Odyssey. And really, really sweet. I like that a lot, man. I think he's an, I want to say, underrated artist. He's not that well-known. I picked up Exiles because... Uh, Miss Marvel was in it in the future, a future Miss Marvel. It's kind of silly. 
It's got some cool layouts, and I think Saladin Ahmed is a great writer, but yeah. Don't bother. Starboy was okay. It's a story you've seen before. It wasn't that great. Still a wonderful comic. Still a great comic. I'd love something bigger to break it up or some immediacy. It's just something that you love to go through, but it it, it needs a power or an oomph. Um, it's beautifully drawn. It's impeccably written, but I want something, bam, to happen with it. Star Wars Annual 4, Star Wars Annual 1 was great, Star Wars Annual 2 is great, Star Wars Annual 3 was one of the worst comics I've read, Star Wars Annual 4 got back to business, really good good issue. Um, if you're still collecting Star Wars, I'm getting tired of the stories, but that was really good. Pick these up because um, they're both in the movie coming out together, and this is a storyline that spanned... Um, Three issues of Spider-Man and three issues of Spider-Gwen, and I've got four of the six issues all together. It's actually a really good read. Um, really kind of liked it. But this was cool. Um, this is like all Asian team, right? Silk, Miss Marvel. Somebody tell me who he is. <laughs> and Amadeus Cho, the totally awesome Hulk. Uh, pretty cool. And here's the Spider-Gwen 16. I also got to get Spider-Gwen 17 and 18 to... Get the rest of that story with Miles and Spider Gwen. Dazzler, this is a one shot. I have a feeling she's coming back into the movie sometime or into the X Men sometime soon. I'm going to really work hard on getting X Men 130, her first appearance. Here's Black Science. Five issues left, and I'm really glad I, I lost. I lost interest in this a while ago, but I'm a completist. Once I've got like 20 issues, I can't let something go. Eh, it's it's blah. Is this the second printing? I have the one with Bruce Wayne looking in the mirror. I couldn't find this, and I found it for cover price at, at a shop. And I was like, cool, but I don't remember it being red. I can't find anywhere that says it's a second printing. So I picked it up. I'm really excited to have both of those covers now, but I'd love to know more about it. I don't know. You're reading Age of Doom? This is really awesome. Black Hammer, Jeff Lemire is creating like his own universe complete with like uh, gods and characters and myths and universes and realms and superheroes and super villains and it, uh, everything Black Hammer is amazing. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love what he's doing there with Dean Ormiston. Um, oh, sorry. There's the latest Paper Girls. Still an excellent story. Oh, I forgot to show that one too. This one I'm absolutely loving. Don't tell my kids I have this because I only let them read the trades. I don't want their fingers on the comics. They love this. I love this. Classic story, but it's done extremely well. Where were we? Paper Girls 21. Almost done with this stack, guys. Thanks for sticking with me for so long. Here you are, buddy. Say hi, if you want. <laughs> There's Little Tacoma Comics, right? He's actually got the shorter hair of my two, two sons. There's four people there. See, people are watching. I had up to six people earlier. Uh I actually like Champion still. Um, it's gone up and down. I like what Jim Zub's doing with it. It's a little bit more coherent. Uh, I got a second one here. This is a live video on YouTube, so it's live. You could go and watch it on you and the thing. You could watch and laugh at me on, on his phone like you usually do. Um, this was I got a repeat of this because it's the first appearance of Snow Guard. Um, so first appearance, grab an extra one of those. This is the 49, 48. It's okay. It's it's not great. I love them to end it at fifty. Um, do something else. I love Walking Key, so I've been supporting Gabriel Rodriguez with Sword of Ages. Um, first issue was okay. Second and second issue was like what? Third issue was amazing. Fourth issue went back to what? If you like massive battles, get this comic. <laughs> I have no idea who's on what side anymore or who's fighting for what, but it's just like a full comic of massive battles between mythical creatures and swords. Got the regular cover and the variant. Um, it's been an up and down wild ride with that. Thank God this came to an end. It came out like six months after the last issue. It was okay, but it'd be nice if like, I'd read the story in, in one year's time. Uh, this is hands down after Tom King. Mark Russell is my favorite current like new author. 
hands down one of the best, um, just one of the absolute best uh, <laughs> comics I've, I've ever read, six issues. It, it's phenomenal what he's done with that. Absolutely. All right, got about 10 left. Still read Archie. There's a joke issue. I hated the Booster Gold, like issue 45, 46, and 47. So I was glad when the Joker stopped by um, the prelude to the wedding. Pretty cool there. Creature of the Night. Not much I can say about this. If you aren't reading it, read it. Kirk Busiek is a wonderful writer, doing great stuff for this uh, myth story of Batman. This was another great five issue limited series. I really wish they would continue this. Salah Ahmed at his absolute best. Anybody read his uh, Silver Surfer? Or not Silver Surfer, his Black Bolt? I never read that. I heard it was great. This was silly and too cliche. I love um, anything to Miss Marvel, but I'm probably not going to continue with this. I do want to get the zero issue that came out like as a promo. If anybody has that, let me know. Max is killing it with this. This is such a bizarre issue. This is what comics should be about. Read Eternity Girl. Absolutely read Eternity Girl. Yeah, Abbott was great. And some of the variants for Abbott was great. She's a great character. Um, the whole thing he did in five issues there were really tight storytelling. Um, yeah, um, you know, starting a whole bunch of new stuff. I wasn't that into this. It just set up some stories. I like Joseph Keating, what he did on Shudder and um, Ringside. Didn't love this. I might pick up issue two, but that's about it. Let's grab the rest out here. There's Age of Doom 3. There's Black Hammer. Oh, sorry, Batman. Um, that's the prelude, I guess, 49, where they make it look like Cat might be having some doubts that Joker put in her mind, but you don't really think so, do you? No, I don't really think so. This one, still going strong, Deadly Class. Uh, you know, like where I said Black Science and Deadly Class both started about the same time. Um, and I could care less about black science now. I'm in love with Deadly Class still. Every issue is great. I dropped this issue in bed last night. There's a crease on the back. It's driving me crazy. Hey, sweetie. How you doing? No food for you. It's not your lunchtime. That's the dog. Moonshine. If you guys liked 100 Bullets, definitely get the, the trades of this if you're not reading this currently. This is really good. Um, yeah, you're right, Escargo. So I do have those a couple Joker um, covers to do. So it won't be my favorite Joker covers. It'll be my only Joker covers, but I'll definitely, definitely get that. Thanks for pointing that out. All right, winding down here, Mr. Miracle number nine. Um, it, again, a really fascinating issue. Love what he's doing with this. If you're reading Mr. Miracle, if you're not reading it, it's somewhere in between what he did with Omega Men and what he did with Vision. It's not as tight a family story's vision, but it's not as crazy as what he did with um, Omega Men. So it's like right in between there. Um, it is a great book, absolutely. If you haven't read Vision, read Vision. If you haven't read Sheriff of Babylon on Vertigo, put that out. Read Sheriff of Babylon. Um, and there's the variant. I've got a variant for about half of these covers, I guess. I'm not exactly sure. I've shown that one before. I finally read it. It's like Dan Slott's beginning on Spider-Man. Yeah. Sorry, don't mean to be a hater. Just, you know, I read it after the fact, not that into it, wasn't my favorite. And then Dead Drop, part of the Valiant Universe. I got this from Pop.Comics. It's been sitting there because I haven't had the desire to read it. I finally got around to reading it, and now I'm glad I've read it, and it's done, and it will go into the collection. But I won't be collecting any more of it. So, guys, man, I haven't done an hour-long video yet, but this goes over my usual half-hour time limit. So thanks for sticking with me. Um, you know, that gets through almost a whole short. So this is not a short box. This is like a shorter than short box. And I hate that there's two sizes for short boxes now because I've got to distinguish. I really wanted the regular short boxes to go with every other short box I have. But now I've got like three of these. So what I do is I use these to collect, like, instead of just alphabetically putting my stuff in order, if I have like a, uh, if I have like, you know, all my Miss Marvels or all my champions, I'll put those in one of these shorter than short boxes. But it still annoys me that I ask for short box and I get this. Um, so, yeah, that is, you know, what I have. I'm not expecting any more contests or big hauls. I get a, like, I've got the, if you haven't checked out um, 
the Miss Marvel variant by um, Stephanie Hans for issue 30. It's coming out next month. Comic Exposure has that. And I know I slagged them off a while ago because of the Princess Leia um, Virgin variant that Andy Granov did, and that came super late. I hope they haven't been following my social media because they might short me on this, but I've ordered four copies of that. Um, man, it just looks really cool. I'm excited about that one. Um, but I, like I said, I don't think I've got anything major coming in the mail other than those uh, comics. Uh, nothing major that I'm looking for other than that Jorge Molina number two variant for Miss Marvel. I will show you a picture of a moth that looks like Olaf from Frozen. Uh, check out Tacoma Comics on Instagram if this doesn't come out too well. But uh, the idea here was I woke up this morning and there was a moth on the um, patio doors that looks like Olaf. I call him Olaf Moth. If you're not familiar with Frozen, ask your kids. Um, but he's it's, it's white and furry and has like that orange beak. Olaf Moth. Um, yeah, so Escargo, I think it's issue 31 because they you know they did 19 issues of volume three and then marvel redid everything and so then they went to volume four and volume four was just a continuation of the same story so they're adding 19 plus 31 and they're saying kamala khan has had 50 issues so it's the 50th like kamala khan miss marvel story but it's issue 31 of the current volume it's coming out in like two weeks three weeks or something um, and Comic Exposure has an exclusive um, cover that Stephanie Hans did. It looks beautiful, man. I would look it up. It is, it, it's without a doubt, one of my favorite looking Miss Marvel covers. I ordered, I think, one of them with something else. And then I was like, I better get some more of those. <laughs> I ordered like three more. I think they're limited. I'm not exactly sure how much, but I think there's a limited um, number of those going out too. Oh, coffee's gone cold. Um, that's okay. So yeah, um, not expecting much more. There's uh, Ace Comic Cons this weekend, but I'm going to Chicago. Anybody know a good Chicago comic shop? Let me know. Uh, there's also like in Lower Pierce County. There's the Washington State Comic Book Fair. Last year I went. It was awesome. There are a lot of dealers, and it was like ten bucks to get in, and five bucks for my kids. This year it's twenty nine dollars to get in, and they're bringing in a bunch of B list actors, and they're really trying to build it up into something. And I just don't want to spend that much money. I'm saving everything for Rose City Comic Con in September. We got a nice hotel with a pool. Uh, going down as a family. The rule is uh, probably miss all Friday, but my wife will take um, the kids one day, and I'll get to go around the Comic Con and stand in long lines. And then um, I'll take the kids the next day, and she'll get to go around Portland on her own and, and do shopping and stuff. And then at night, we eat dinner at, at um, Frank's Noodle Shop, which is an amazing noodle shop in Portland if you've never been there. It was on um, the show with that really annoying guy, Diners, Drives, and Diners, Dive, Dives, Diners, and Drive Through, whatever. Um, you know, Guy Fieri, who pronounced his name Fieri. Um, it was on that show. So it's a really good noodle shop if you're ever in Portland, Oregon. And uh, unless you guys got any questions or want to see any of these books again, I think that's about it. I want to thank everybody who's been here. Sean Richards, Longshanks, S. Cargo, uh, Poor Man stopped by, Comic Books 305, I Don't Know You, Sleepy Reader stopped by. Well, I mean, thank you. It's nice to know you. I don't mean like I don't know you. I mean like I haven't known you before, but it's nice to meet you now. Uh, Gene Polace Peter is here for a while. Uh, and he said, what's up to everybody? It looks like it for the, uh, looks like it for the, uh, chat. So nice seeing everybody. Glad you could stop by. Thanks, Escargo. It's really a, an extended haul. It was just everything that's still sitting around in my, uh, in my box before I move it over to the, the, um, storage place. I don't want you to think that this was like one haul. <laughs> this is like six halls. Uh, but I wanted to get it off my chest when I had some time. So uh, we got some more moving to do today. Take the kids to the park, play some soccer and uh, go to the climbing gym tonight. And that's about it. So see you guys later. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day, everybody.